Seoul, South Korea is a vibrant and exciting city one that cleverly combines ancient history with ultra-modern design and technology. The city is filled with a wide range of tourist attractions of all types, from outdoor adventures like exploring Mount Namsan and its surrounding park to indoor fun like visiting one of Seoul's many museums. Seoul is also a city of palaces, with five huge palace complexes located throughout the city and now restored to their former glory. Seoul is also well known for its food, with a mouth-watering array of street food, Korean specialties like barbecue, and fine dining options. Discover the best things to do in this exciting city with our list of the 10 first places to visit in Seoul. 1. N. Seoul Tower, Namsan Tower. Rising almost 500 meters above the city, this communications and observation tower provides dramatic views of the city from its perch on the side of Mount Namsan. A cable car whisks you up the side of the mountain to the base of the tower. From here, you can go up in the tower and visit any one of four observation decks, one of which is a rotating restaurant. There are two restaurants at the tower and, of course, several gift shops. There's even a digital observatory, where people with height issues can experience a live, 360-degree view through the use of 32 LED screens and cameras mounted at the tower's top. The views from the tower are great, but so are the views of the tower from most parts of the city. Computer-controlled LED lighting on the exterior of the tower provides a digital, visual cultural experience of Seoul with themed lighting presentations. 2. Bukshan Hanuk Village. For a taste of Korean traditional culture and architecture, head over to the Bukshan Hanuk Village. This preserved area of several ancient neighborhoods gives you a feel for what it was like to live in Korea 600 years ago. It's right in central Seoul, in the area between the Gyeongbokgung Palace and the Changdeokgung Palace. The neighborhoods feature hanoks or traditional Korean houses. It's a unique place, as it's a historic area, very popular with tourists, but it's also a real neighborhood because the houses are all occupied. Some of the hanoks are now guest houses and bed and breakfasts, and a few are museums and can be toured. Others are cultural centers showcasing traditional crafts and other historic aspects of Korean life. This is a fun place to spend an afternoon and really gives visitors the feeling of being in ancient Korea due to the historic architecture and narrow streets. 3. Lot World Tower. One of the newest attractions in Seoul is the Lotte World Tower skyscraper. It's 500 meters above the ground and one of the world's tallest, currently fifth buildings. There are several indoor and outdoor observation areas called Seoul Sky at the top on the 123rd floor. Views are spectacular both during the day and at night, and you can see 360 degrees around the city. On the 118th floor, there's the sky deck with the world's highest glass floor. Like magic, the floor changes from opaque to clear, terrifying unsuspecting visitors. Even getting to the top is fun, and the journey is done via super-fast, double-decker elevators, with windows on one side and LED screens on the other three in the ceiling. Inside the tower are offices, luxury residences, and a hotel. There's also an aquarium and a large shopping mall. The tower is home to a concert hall and a state-of-the-art 21-screen movie plex. 4. Gyeongbokgung Palace. First built in 1395, Gyeongbokgung Palace is the largest of Seoul's five grand palaces built during the powerful Joseon dynasty. Destroyed and rebuilt several times over the centuries, it was restored to its original glory after the Second World War and totally restored in the 1990s. Within the palace grounds, you can also find the National Palace Museum of Korea and the National Folk Museum, and both are worth a visit. The Palace Museum is especially fascinating as it presents items from the palaces of the Joseon dynasty. This includes priceless antiques and artwork, as well as everyday items for cooking, cleaning, and daily life. The National Folk Museum focuses on items from daily life, as well as clothing and dioramas, to tell the story of the Korean people since prehistoric times. 5. Changyichian Stream. This natural creek that flows through central Seoul was covered over by highways in the post-Korean War economic boom. Seven miles of the creek were uncovered as part of an urban revitalization project and turned into an outdoor recreation area, opening in 2005. There are now seven miles of creekside hiking, walking and biking trails. 
It really has changed the CBD of Seoul by bringing an artery of green into what was a very urbanized, crowded area. The creek is also home to the spectacular Seoul Lantern Festival, held each November. Ornate, lighted paper lanterns are displayed in and along the creek and each night thousands of people line the creek and view the floating artwork. 6. Itaewon Itaewon is a bustling neighborhood of Seoul focused on a few pedestrian streets filled with shops, cafes, and other consumer businesses. If you have limited time in the city, it's one of the those places that can give you a real feel for Korean retail culture in a short time period. There are food carts, street performers, and some of the side streets are filled with restaurants. 7. Dong Diamond Design Plaza Known by its initials, the DDP is a very cool design center in Seoul's Dongdaemun area. Dongdaemun is also known for its shopping, there are a lot of department stores and discount stores in the area. The silver, orb-like flowing DDP building looks like something from outer space. It was designed by the late, great architect Zaha Hadid. The complex is filled with showrooms, workspaces, offices, and design studios. There is also what has to be Seoul's coolest shop, selling all kinds of interesting items showcasing contemporary design. The building is also very popular as a photo subject, both during the day and night. At night, the design center comes alive, the highlight being 25,550 white, LED roses that light up. In perhaps Seoul's ultimate contrast, there are ruins of the ancient city fortress preserved just outside the front entrance of the design center. 7. Gwangjang Market Seoul's best food market combines a taste bud tempting array of street food vendors under one large roof. The market features rows of food stalls, offering every kind of Korean food you can imagine. The market is in central Seoul, and it's open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. 8. Insidong This unique neighborhood is filled with stores that sell Korean traditional folk and handicrafts along with art galleries. Stores sell things like hanji, traditional, handmade paper, hanbo, traditional clothing, teas, pottery, and unique artwork. Hanbo, traditional clothing, teas, pottery, and unique artwork. The galleries in Insidong feature Korean fine art of all types. There are also a lot of tea houses and small cafes, perfect for a break during shopping adventures. 9. Myong Dong Myong Dong is one of the primary shopping districts in Seoul. The two main streets meet in the center of the block with one beginning from Myong Dong subway station. Many brand-name shops and department stores line the streets and alleys. Common products for sale include clothes, shoes, and accessories. Unlike Namdiman or Dongdaiman, many designer brands are sold in Myong Dong. In addition, several major department stores have branches here, including Lot Department Store. 10. Namdiman Market Opened in 1964 Namdiman Market is the largest traditional market in Korea with shops selling various goods. All products are sold at affordable prices and the stores in this area also function as wholesale markets. Most of the goods are made directly by the store owners. Namdiman Market is even open overnight, from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m., and is crowded with retailers from all over the country.